best team in the league finishing top, only to be second best in the finals. Love or loathe this structure, it is what it is. And Bristol, the club, its supporters, their back of the city, are desperate for Premiership rugby. Surely Lightning cannot strike twice in the space of 12 months. What a noise, what a stadium. Pat picked him, and so do I. Matthew Morgan comes back into the starting 50 as a diminutive figure, but he has a large part to play tonight. The main aim to create scoring opportunities that will enable Bristol to build a first leg lead. Right in amongst it tonight with his unique perspective, pitch site is Pat. Well, Donny, as befits a final, we have the very best of everything. You won't find a finer playing surface, not a breath of wind. And in Wayne Barnes, we've got a world-class referee. Should things get tough, we've got none less than a Cambridge scholar in the truck in Rowan Kit. They've waited nine months. Come on now, Barnes, just blow the whistle. No two games have been more keenly awaited or spoken about in the history of championship rugby. A place in the Premiership awaits Bristol or Worcester. Okay, time run, this please. is the Green King IPA Championship final. First leg. Utterly unique, utterly absorbing, utterly enthralling. And this is going to be tight, this is going to be tenacious, this is going to be terrific, and that's brilliant from Amesbury. The Premiership feel all intents and purposes, it is. Like two prize heavyweight fighters going toe-to-toe, -to -toe. penal. Early into the action, the fullback not required by Stuart Lancaster in his World Cup squad. Brazulier, of course, third choice scrum half, no Johnny R, no Charlie Mulcrow, Amesbury. The Bristol winger, not for the first time tonight, gets through the first tackle. Neat little kick from Dwayne Peel. Bristol on the offensive here, here's Morgan. Wrapped up by Ruskin, an early penalty to Bristol and immediately Wayne Barnes points towards the posts. Well, Charlie Ainsbury started this game as as well as anybody, there's two big breaks there. Biggs can't really get hold of him, you've got to put him down. Look, you can see the power through his legs. And that's exactly what Bristol forwards want. They want a target, and again, good break. That time for the new guy, Brooker, straight in. Amesbury on hand, and that gives absolute perfect ball for the likes of Dwayne Peel. Boxing on that, case, that, that, that occasion and chipping the ball through. Yeah, well, interestingly, before the game, the murmurings were that perhaps Pennell's not 100% fit. His left leg is heavily strapped. Now, he's so important for Warriors, they were always going to play him, but clearly that message got to Bristol, and the first opportunity, Peel puts it up and tests Pennell. He passes the first test, though. One point for Gavin Henson with his boots and he arrived. There's three more. Didn't have his best day in the second semi final. Starts the final first leg with a really nice clean strike. Cool and calculated. That's why he's partnering more in the centre. The experience telling the boot accurate. Tremendous start for Bristol just after two minutes. Isn't it just? Yeah, absolutely. Even for the first kickoff. Those early moments, of course, Bristol won both legs between these two in the regular season. Rounds one and round 22, stop, stop. only four points between them in both of those fixtures. Pennell, again, Peel just testing the fullback. Zulia, Ruskin and Lamb flies one out. Van Veltz, Cooper Vuna slips it inside to grow. Gareth Maul is there. Another well, Welshman in this Bristol lineup. Lamb pulls it back for Ryan Mills. Those two distributors can be crucial for Worcester tonight. Ryan Mills had men outside. But to be fair to him, I think they were forwards. Certainly, one of them was Augustin Creevy. Felt he needed to go on himself, and we will go back for the knock on. 
but immediately you're seeing those two distributors he can do that, for Worcester coming into play. Back. Well, Mike so Friday talked about it, the counter-attack potential from the Warriors. Cavalry at the back, this time actually is one of the centres, Ryan Mills. Unfortunately, just holding it basketball style. Keep it in your both hands. And if something happens like that, you can get, retain the ball. It doesn't, but you can see the potential there from all the back three of Worcester and also the midfield. They're not afraid to play. They'll come. They won't leave anything on the pitch tonight. And it was an area that Rotherham had some success, wasn't it? Outside of the 13 They, they bounced uh, Matthew Morgan a couple of times. They made inroads into that centre. Yeah. You know, Gavin Henson and Maul and, and have to stand up tonight. They have to re have to ask for the ball more. They have to give their presence in attack and equally in defence. Huge psychological edge can be won at this scrum. No Ross McMillan for Bristol in the middle of that uh, front row. He's out with a pectoral muscle injury. Scrum goes down. Let's get some thoughts, early thoughts, from uh, Lee Blackett in the studio. Lee. Yeah, uh, exactly what we said before. The pressure, Bristol pressure, really hard in and around the breakdown. And, and there, Worcester got some great depth and managed to get on the outside of them two phases in a row. Uh, and they just went from side to side. So. I think as we saw and as we've said before the game, there was obvious weaknesses that we saw in our game and, and for me, uh, Worcester have obviously seen that and trying to exploit it straight from the start. And with those two distributors, Lee, is it going to be easier to, to get to those areas with Mills and Lamb? Oh, a lot easier. You saw, you saw Lamb's passing game, it's second to none at this level, uh, or Premiership level. Uh, and with his passing game, and then obviously you've got a second distributor with Ryan Mills, then I, I think you, you, you've got two great guys that are going to, it's going to be a lot easier to get on the outside. And this is crucial, the crucial area. It was in the semi-finals when the, the power of Bristol outdid Rotherham as the power of Worcester outdid London Scottish. First points you're going to say there, good referee in the middle, goes to Bristol. What's your thoughts, Pat? Yeah, interestingly, before the game, we, when we were watching Bristol warming up, Bristol were doing full contact and kind a of full ball scrummaging against, uh, I guess, a, a reserve team just to get them ready for that first contact and that first scrum time, and it paid off. And Worcester have gone for the big front row, haven't they? The, the big front five to try and counteract Bristol's power. Remember the semi-final first leg. It wasn't until the big power play came in from Bristol they were over to overturn rather. If Worcester are going to get any result of this game, the likes of Creevy, the likes of Ruskin, and Sean have to put it in. And they've gone for a two-prop, one hooker split on the bench, and they are specialised loose and tight head. So they believe that's where the game will be won and lost, and I think it will be, as any of the big games are. But Henson again has got a chance. It's well within his range. There's a penalty from the scrum. Penalty from the line out. Set piece is going to play a huge part, and it's Kevin Henson with his second opportunity for points here. 79% before the semi finals dropped down to 70% success rate after those two games. 100%. 100%. It looked like it was straight and true from Gavin Henson. 50% so far tonight. <laughs> you don't often see it just sliding as this the direction of his the right boot because it's absolutely phenomenal conditions. The pitch, I've never seen a better pitch than this. There's no wind. That's just uh, he's slightly just drawn that to the left. But it's all about strategy, isn't it? It's all about discipline. It's all about execution. Times two equals the Premiership as far as I'm concerned because obviously there's four acts to be played, two tonight and two next Wednesday at Six Ways. Bigs. Good tackle on Ryan Jones, isn't it? Right round his ankles. Clean out, didn't Experienced take campaigner is Tom Biggs. Of course, they have had their injuries in the back line. Worcester. No Max Stelling, of course. They're really hopeful he may be back next week. Andy Simmons with his ACL injury. Dean Hammond with a thigh injury after scoring that try. No Charlie Mulcrone either. Super kick. The clear out wasn't actually there, so again, I know Dean Ryan complained nice to the RFU this. about the referee in their last home game, well, their loss obviously to Bristol. 
And I think we're speaking to him last night in training where he was quite happy that Wayne Barnes had taken control of this game. He's pretty even for both sides, doesn't get flustered. Worcester's really first attempt here, a catch and drive. So devastating against London Scottish in the semi final. It's gone down. Wayne Barnes has seen it. Penalty to Worcester. They try to keep it up, Worcester. Brazilia. Oh, he's through! Brazilia. Just a half gap. Flies it inside to James Percival. Creevy. Oh, he's working well tonight, isn't he? Creevy. Mike Williams' hands aren't working particularly well there. No advantage coming to Worcester. And they will have the penalty. First opportunity in that 22 for the Warriors. And this is what you want from your big players. A fantastic throw. Percival is up there. Worcester, try, sorry, Bristol come back and try and sack it. They do invariably and again. And Brazilier just does so well. Splits the defence. And look at this. Offload. And this is what you want from the big players. Hitting hard, hitting hard. Now, Creevy there. I don't want him offloading here, I want him right into the middle of the, at the guts of Bristol. Really, he should have just carried that ball on, positioned it on the floor and give his scrum half a chance. He put Williams really in no man's land. Confidence in their driving more. Gone for the middle of the line out. Van Belt has been an outstanding leader all season. Look at this. Who is going to break first? Worcester. Edging forward, over the line, try is awarded. It has been such a dangerous weapon for Worcester all season. And it's Sam Betty. First try for this Green King IPA Championship final. Brilliant take from Van Velt, he's up there again. They packed this superbly. The communication is there, the big, big blue. Blue Bull is in charge, the ball gets to the back. Sam Betty splinters off, and there's nothing Bristol can do. They've been absolutely splintered. Straight through the middle, you can see the celebration. What a try from Worcester Warriors. Sam Betty, of course, taking the place of Sam Lewis, who tragically lost his father, Roy, on Monday night. Goes without saying, our thoughts are with him and his family Has that inspired Worcester on certainly seemed to with that driving more different type of player Sam Betty and Mike Friday knows all about that driving more from the semi-final Mike yeah I mean it's deja vu for me that just watching the uh, the, the way that Worcester put that together they were long in that drive and just the power of Thomas Percival Mike Williams three big men and then Vansville's pushing through allowing the likes of uh, the rest of the Worcester pack just to give them an opportunity to get that try and bear in mind Sam Lewis got three tries didn't he against London Scottish in that second leg semi-final so obviously our thoughts are with the lad tonight but uh, Worcester doing pretty well at the moment Mitch Eden missed that second semi-final he's a really big ball carrier for Bristol is Mitch Edix come through the academy here at Bristol there's plenty of those players the likes of Marco Mama Jack Tubby those guys on the bench in and amongst these experienced campaigners like Dwayne Peel and Ryan Jones loose pass though it's Jack Wallace who's up in the line from fullback Dwayne Peel has a, a snipe and then is Repel quite easily Not from Worcester. Nixon had to play scrum up. Matthew Morgan, you saw the, the quick freak there. There's Lemming. Worcester's defence in and around that breakdown. Very sharp at the moment. Of course, the tightest defence in the regular season in the championship. Penal. No sign of any knee injury there from Chris Pennell. Three high balls, taking them quite superbly. Only 40 tries conceded in the regular season. Bristol, 53. This is why Matthew Morgan has been selected. Chris Pennell with a superb tackle for the England fullback. 
but this situation set up by the little genie at 10. He's Amesbrook, he's been all muscle and power in this opening 13 or so minutes for the home side here at Ashton Gate. Hence, Healy, it's a brilliant line, it's a brilliant score. He missed the semi-final second leg with a shoulder injury, Mitch Eady. But that's why they brought him straight back in for the final. But it was all about Matthew Morgan's break within his own half. What a try from Eady. Bristol-born local lad. You can see what it means to him. That's how to hit a line. But it comes there. It's a smart from Robinson. Again, he made two slight errors, did Matthew Morgan. This is why he's Green King IPA. Championship player of the season. Lee Blackett was talking about him. He can do things that only people can dream about. He sets it up superbly. He doesn't force the pass. They regurgitate the ball. Henson again standing in his first receiver. Match it. What a line. What a try. Experience of this man lining up the kick now to slot in. A first receiver in those great hands of his. Is he going to have a, a great boot? Misses last one, didn't he? Wasn't going to miss again, Gavin Henson. 10 5 it is. Worcester's game plan is underpinned by, I guess, the simple structures of rugby. It's a good kick, but you have to chase well, especially with the likes of Morgan there. And you can see just how fractured that chasing line was. They picked a big pack to play the corners, to play the percentages. Kick chase is a big fundamental ingredient to their game plan today. They've got to get that right if they're going to win this game. And it was all thought coming into the game how cute Bristol had to be with their kicking game because Worcester Warriors love to counter-attack. I'm sure we'll see a bit of that, but actually you're right, Pat. It's Bristol that, uh, that killed the Warriors then. I do have a bone to pick with both of you, though. You both said it was going to be tight and conservative. <laughs> no tries. Let's get on with it, Hammond. What a game. Isn't it just? Cooper Vuna. It's a great battle, isn't it, against Lemmy. Wearing 11. Playing on this right wing, though. Advantage coming to Worcester. The arm was out from Wayne Barnes. Lab. Lovely chip through, Ruski, Van Veltz, needs a speedster now, it's Percival though, the second row, what a kick from Ryan Lamb, high pressure situation, immense skill from Ryan Lamb, brought here by Dean Ryan of course, the man he was at Gloucester with, there he is, with a pass again into Van Veltz. Lap, penal, crowd calling for crossing and obstruction from Sam Betty. Penal just slipped there, be interesting to see how he gets up. There's Mike Williams off to the Premiership next season. Penal looks fine. Vuna, Brazulia, they're, they're playing here, Worcester. They really are. It's Grove. Mills always floated one out for Biggs. It's got Van Belts inside. Worcester are that close now. What a game this is. Ruskin. The Georgia. Advantage to Worcester. It goes wide, it's Coming cool. again. Lamb oh. with a kick pass. The card coming. Hands in the pocket from Wayne Barnes. And it's Gaston Cortez. Off to the naughty boy set for 10 minutes. And how crucial will that turn out to be, not only tonight, but in the context of both these finals? Well, it was crucial in the last league game. And two went to the bin. And the Warriors were able to... Well, two Warriors went to the bin and Bristol were able to score two tries. That's where it came from. But actually, it was Biggs' inability to pass the ball back inside. Well, I reckon if he'd have put that ball back inside to Van Vels, that would have been a score purely if Van Vels had been marked, just purely because of the South African's power. Not sure what Wayne Barnes is. Have I missed something, Johnny? Here's I normally do. Right? 
is a, a Perine well, obviously they're waiting Perinesi, for Perinesi. absolutely sorry mate Perinesi has to come on for the scrum to happen and here it goes it's over the top it's not Ford pass that ball pass that ball it's Matthew Davis and even Ryan Lamb absolutely Ryan Jones is going to stop him but again Ryan Lamb can stand up he likes these big games there you go you just keep dragging him out you drag Wallace out you put Van Vels back inside that is an own goal missed sorry and you can't afford to miss too many of those so no, even over two legs you can't and he will know it you don't have to look back at the video Interestingly, we've seen in the early exchanges here that Bristol are very, very tight at rook time. It's giving Worcester quite a lot of space in the outside channel. I, I believe if there's one side right now that aren't particularly well equipped to defend with 14, it's Bristol. Here you go, fantastic opportunity for Brasilia. He's got pace, small to the ground, he's playing against his rugby hero idol, Dwayne Peel. But I think his guys in front want it, I think they might go for another scrub. Peel and Brazuliek. I know it's it's the done thing, Johnny, isn't it? Take the points and offer, but you've got someone in the bin. It's 15 against 14. If they think they've got an ascendancy, Creevy's called it. And here we go. So now the, the gauntlet's down, that's fine. You've got Big standing in almost almost right behind the scrum. Lamb's out here. Everyone's on this left-hand side. We will look see. Look at the size of that blind Crouch. side, Dowie. You, well, you a, can't possibly defend five. that. A quick hook. Eight, nine, you're in. Aims, we won't have a chance. Has to be solid first up, and it is, isn't it? Van Velt, here comes the power. It's a penalty try. Second try for Worcester, and it's a penalty try from the scrum. They got one, didn't they, right at the end? And the semi-final first leg at London Scottish. That's exactly Juan Cortez. Head in hands. The Argentinian there. He saved probably a five-pointer, but he's given away a seven-pointer. Peronisi had a job to do, but again, one down. And again, a good scrum. This is what Worcester Warriors knew. Talking to Carl Hogg before they knew the game. Could be one purely on the back of the scrum. Here you go. You can see there's Gareth Malton on this side, but again, he's not putting any weight in there. Centre trying to act as a flanker. You've got to get lower. You've got to give your prop the support on his leg. And uh, not even Andy Robinson can say anything about that. And the decision to go at home, that, well, we thought the selection of Matthew Morgan, they're looking uh, for point, a point advantage to take to the second leg. I, I think it's so tight, it's been so tight in the season. What was it, four points in the first game to, um, to Bristol? It was four points in the last game to Bristol, but it could have gone either way. Worcester were a lead, you know, we're ahead in those two games. Um, yeah, home advantage does give you a little bit, but Worcester Warriors prove if, you, if you're a band of brothers together and you've got a good scrum, you can turn things round. And they're continuing to play here. Grove, Alex Grove, the... Scotland international, Brazilia again gets that ball away really quickly, doesn't it? Creevy. And you, you, you highlighted him before the kickoff, Dowie. What a shift the hooker is putting in at the moment. He is, and you can also see, see Lamb's communication there. You can see Bristol trying to press up, and they want to give this boy the ball. And he is something special, isn't it? Cooper Vuna. Seven tries in six appearances. Two in the first semi final. One against Bristol in round 22. The Pirates don't like him either. He scored a hat trick against them. Miltz. Again, he's flown it out of there. It's huge space out there. Try. Van Belt. It's Biggs. They won't catch him. They will. Oh. It's brilliant work from Amesbury. Brilliant, brilliant defensive work from Amesbury. He thought it was a certain try. I thought he'd got. They've got two on the overlap, but there. Amesbury started the game superbly with two carries. He's just saved a certain try. That is brilliant. Even back inside the panel, panel it's Peel sweeping across as, as good nines do. Van Velt is everywhere at the moment. You think I went too early? I thought he was in. He wasn't. Great scrambling defence in Bristol. Certain try saved.
Not a bad game, is it? It'll do. First quarter, 12 points to 10. Too much Penalty try. Right, Two Tom? other tries, that looked... Oh, okay, watch on, fellas. Lost four. It was going to be a try, Charlie Amesbury. Yeah, he'll be off, don't Hardly worry. been involved this season, only eight starts. His ninth tonight, but in the last two months, has been superb. Try so scoring the first semi-final, of course, against the Rotherham Titans. Scrum Maybe time again. last year. Another scrum. Sorry, right. Johnny, I know it's Next your... Um, area of strength but I, it's, I just it's such a fascinating matchup tonight we've just seen what Worcester Warriors did pushing Bristol back to get a penalty try Peel to put the ball in now remember they're Bristol, down to Bristol, seven Bristol. aren't they against well, a head penalty well what do you do here my boy I know exactly what I've been doing I know exactly what I've been doing well they they've had two kickable penalties down they put one into the corner for the line out. Oh. Better score got... the try from. And they went for the scrum for another <laughs> kickable penalty. They got the penalty try from. You've got an Argentinian in the middle of there. I wonder what he's going for. Oh, let's go for three point. No, he won't. They're brought up on this. Fourth scrum penalty conceded by Bristol. The correct option, as far as I'm concerned. Will they de deliver the correct result, as far as Dean Ryan's concerned? Already seven points while Gaston Cortes, of course, the tight head for Bristol, was yellow carded. Here he is. I mean, it's not a bad man to bring off the bench, is it? Kept 19 times by Samar. Anthony Peronisi. But Cortes was, was first choice. Been here before for Bristol last year against London Welsh. Was the set again. And again, the power comes on. Another penalty. And the referee wants a word here. Let's listen in. Um, no, just, let me just, um, I need you to keep your height. Can't have you going to the floor, and I can't have you taking him to the floor. That's two penalties, three penalties in a row. Next one, there we go. And then where do we go, Derek? I think that's five penalties, even with my bad maths. Well, I know where, where uh, Wayne Barnes will go. One of the most experienced refs around, obviously in the world setup of, of 12 going to the World Cup. And it seems to be going Worcester's way at the moment. With a seven-man bench, there's only one prop required. On the bench, if Peronisi goes, then we go to uncontested. Of course, Five. we will be 10 to 13, Seven. but let's have this scrum. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Just gone awesome. down, and this is why you have a man like Wayne Barnes for these finals, isn't it? High, get... high pressure environment. He's been here, he's been here sometimes, well, over half a century of, of tests and that experience. Yes, he makes a few mistakes, who doesn't, but he won't be flustered. And there you go, keep your balance, keep your height, and if you do keep your height, you've got to say that the Worcester pack is uh, rather straighter back than Bristol at the moment. But he's in control, he's got the whistle, we will see. 24 minutes into this game, but this is a huge, huge scrum. Goes down again, and Wayne Barnes, hand is in his pocket again. Peronisi was worn, and now he's got two players, not only that, two but props for Bristol in the sin bin. But this is, this is a problematic area, we're having only 22 in the squad. Bristol only have one recognised prop, whereas Worcester have two and a hooker, so this will actually suit Bristol. They will go to uncontested scrums, I am sure. Not going to take a scrum, so your line out's going to be but I wouldn't go for a scrum now. So, okay. but what they can do actually is go for the line. The option is there, which will probably suit Worcester a little bit, but not as much as the scrum, obviously. So it's it would have to be uncontested scrums. So Worcester are thinking on their feet, they've gone for the corner, gone for the line-out, gone for the line-out, dry. 
Betty scored a try from the line-out drive, didn't it? Percival takes it. Now they said it's a great counter drive from Bristol though. And Betty spins off again. Jack Lamb, great tackle. Amesbury's in there as well again. Creevy now. Just rolling on at the moment, Worcester, aren't they? Brazulier has caught that. 13 against 15 here. Huge moments in the context of this final. Williams. Oh, he's knocked it on, and Gavin Henson kicks that ball forward. The biggest cheer of the night so far. Pennell goes back. And Pennell is caught by Lemmy and Morgan. Enough players round there, though. And Worcester get the penalty. Dwayne Peel can't believe it. Just too anxious in the end. And I think Bristol will take that from where they were with 30 men. It was all hands down. Lamb, I thought, did a pretty good job. Then Brazilia got caught. Is it Mike Williams is down in the opposite? 22. It He's is. taking a big bound. That was brilliant result from Bristol. 13-man Bristol. Relieved the pressure. Here you go. You can see it coming out. Betty, he does. He carries so well. Takes it down. He gets reset. Amesbury's in there. Good. That was a great hit by Lamb. There he comes. This is where Williams gets injured as he hits the floor. Somehow that ball's been stripped. Henson with a big boot. And we're back on the halfway line. Crowd playing their part as we thought they were. Mikey Williams is back up. Henson can't take it. Advantage to Worcester. What an incredible start. Wide to this final and it's Jonathan Thomas needs to draw Lemmy Cooper Buna Cooper Buna oh he's going himself it's brilliant <laughs> Wayne Burns wants to check please just check and touch this could he just uh, confirm we are looking that? to see Thanks, mate. If Buda has hit the touchline. Yeah, the question asked is try yes or no from referee Wayne Barnes to the television match official Rowan Kitt. Well, if you watch the body language, Cooper Vuna has just come back to the halfway nonchalantly. He knows, and for my first insect, that was brilliant. JT there, just passing the ball out, that's Jonathan Thomas, this guy is a sensation. Rugby league background. That's a try, I thought, first instinct was a try, and as I said, rugby league background. The Newcastle Knights, he's played for the Rebels in Australia. What a buy, Dean Ryan has <laughs> bought there. there. Thanks, mate. Just right. brilliantly, inside, outside wallet, there's nothing the fullback can do, he gave him too much space. Oh, uh, my word, that Bunsy, is, again, that award the try. a great okay. score. He's been an absolute revelation since he arrived at the club. Home, Craig, just remind me. Cooper Vuna. Eight start. Yeah. Eight try. Yeah. Unbelievable. Three tries, and we haven't got 28 minutes on the clock. Right from the touchline then, Ryan Lamb, he's brought it in a little bit too early, but it is still 17 points to 10, and now we can have a word with Worcester's head coach, Carl Hogg, who must be in cloud cuckoo land. Can you quite believe the, the start that your team has made here, Carl? Yeah, we've made an excellent start. Uh, seems to be lots of space out there for both sides, uh, we're ball in hand. Um, they're obviously a press D, but they're pretty narrow, and we're looking to get on the outside edge of them. All the talk, Carl, in the, in the build-up to these finals all season has, has been about pressure. It, it seems like neither side are playing with any pressure on them at all. It, it's, has that come from the players? Has that come from you as a management team? 
No, I just think the weather conditions are obviously excellent for handling rugby. Um, I think some of our kick chase uh, from both sides hasn't been great, so it's presented opportunities with ball in hand. And I think both sides have, have looked to be ambitious with ball in hand. Carl, Carl, I stay with you, mate. You've got uh, Methin Davis. He has something to do with the scrimmaging. He must have a smile on his face at the moment. Yeah, it's gone very well. We've obviously got a little bit of ascendancy up there. Two yellow cards of that, so um, yeah, it's an area we'll look to um, impose ourselves in. Really appreciate your time, Carl. Thank you. Lamb, and it's Grove, and there's space out there again. And it's Pennell, and it's Cooper Vuna again. Wallace, good tackle again. There's Sam Betty. He has been all over the place, isn't he, Sam Betty? And this man is getting himself involved as well. And Worcester want to get him involved as much as they can. Biggs is out there wide. Amesby, brilliant tackle. But Biggs has stolen it off him, it went forward. Well, there's two issues here. We've got Luke Pierce is talking. One is in if he's been taken um, out in the air, but I think that both boys have gone out for it. And secondly, was there um, a forward Stuart. pass back inside from Biggs to Ruskin? Potential try, but just had a double check. For Understood. Me. Rowan Kitt, the TMO, will decide. But again, Lamb is pulling the strings out there at the moment. Cooper Vuna is doing the destruction, but it's Lamb. Left, right, passing, kicking. I. That's gone backwards. It's, it's whether there's any tank. He has got a due of care as Biggs or that. Oh, okay, I can't say at, there's anything. There's two guys. Yeah, the we're looking at whether he's called a mark. We're looking at whether he's knocked it on. Well, you can hear that whether he's called a mark, whether he's knocked it on. Oh, we're just having a look at a couple of things. Well, from the first instinct, yeah, sorry, John, I know you're looking at first instinct. Not in a realistic position to catch a bit. I Barnsley. think that yeah. was fine. There's no contact in the air of note, but he has knocked it on before the line. Um, can we just check as well? There's, did he call Mark? Um, no contact in the air, obviously, but just check whether he called Mark or not. Can Understood. Luke Thanks, Pierce mate. on the far side, the assistant Wait. referee. Um, Audio-wise, would have been well, in a good position to hear whether he called for the mark or um, not. Let me just tell you what said. There's no contact in the air, yeah. uh, but it's not a try because he's knocked it on. We're just double-checking whether he's called mark because he's got his back to me and I can't see it. So we're just seeing that. It's either a scrum or it's a free kick. So we're just going to find But it's definitely not a try. You can't see from there. And as Biggs goes forward there, Okay, for the ball. I think actually, the initial right. decision is absolutely correct. Okay. It does actually go forward. <laughs> he doesn't Aims call. Great. He may call it when he gets to the floor, but he doesn't Bundy. call it in the air, yeah. and he doesn't uh, put his no hands up. Suggestion that he called. Mark. Really so, great okay. from him. Lost forward. So he's had a bloody good game. Attacking wise, initially, as I said, the start of the game and, uh, yeah, and sweeping up at the you've back. It backwards, but you've got to shout mark. But again, to call it's Lamb, mark. isn't it? He's left, right, big loopy right. passes, big part, short little passes round the corner, and then the, the kick pass scrum, to each okay? corner. It is Brilliant. A contested scrum. It is contested. Crouch. Bite. Teal with the feed. We're we're Set. back up to 14. Bristol were 13 for a moment. Now Bristol get the scrum. No, now so Bristol the get the penalty from the scrum. Gaston Cortez meant that, didn't he? Half an hour, just over half an hour gone. And it has been an absolutely breathtaking first half an hour of rugby, hasn't it, Pat? You're not wrong. Him. I mean, uh, watching the replays, the entire Worcester bench would gather around watching Cooper Vuna's try. Sam Stegman says, I was, he said, I'm worried it was going to be a stale game. He said, it's, it's the best game I've seen all season. He said, and I'm absolutely in awe of Cooper Vuna's finish. You've got to say, coming from one winger to another, that's a big compliment, but it was some try. Some try, some start. I mean, the, the first I'm game not, here, the last game in round one was sensational, wasn't it? 23-19, you remember no, the, the Ben Moss's try in the 80th minute. That's it's just loose for a moment. Sorensen's oh, done well on the yep. floor. Then Peel goes high, Biggs. 
can't take it. Pennell couldn't take it either. And who's there Tackle again? Only. It's Sam Betty and again. No Worcester line out with some you. big runners in that midfield. But they are the decoys. Loose pass this time. From Lamb to Mills. They're using Van Velt and Williams as decoys, aren't they? And pulling the ball back to Mills. And again, Mills doing, the, I think, the sensible thing and the correct thing there, not forcing the pass, just going down and <laughs> hopefully letting Brasilia box kick. Dwayne Field Bray. Cortez did his best, didn't he? Brasilia box kick was half charged down by Sorensen. Edi is caught behind that gain line. And the penalty as well. You could just see it, couldn't you, Edie? Was isolated. Ryan Lamb wanting to go at a million miles an hour, was looking to the corner, wasn't he? Ten penalties conceded by Bristol so far. And again, the ball's going out into the midfield and they're being chopped down, really. And again, as Worcester got a, a box kick charge down, really, you've got to be thinking that's what... Dwayne Peel should be doing. You're coming towards half time, eight minutes to go, and you've made a mistake direct in front of the post to possibly and probably leak another three. He's missed a couple of conversions right now, but his play around the field, and getting this penalty awarded to his side has, has been brilliant for Ryan Lamb. Dean Ryan mentioned his big game temperament to us last night at the captain's run. Needs to start getting those three points, though, doesn't he? That's seven points he's missed. Well, that was a crucial, wasn't it, missed kick right there. But let's look at this game in context. Bristol have been down to 13 men for, what, the best part of 20 minutes, and there's still only one score away. I can tell you now, if you ask any single one of that Bristol bench, would they have taken this, given they've been down to 13? I think they'd have bitten your hand off. Absolutely right, seven points the difference. Remember, Andy Simmons has done a majority of the cooking for Worcester Warriors this season. And he was inside. And Jack Wallace, in there, just 23 years of age. Carl Trainer, haven't seen too much of him in the loose. Much of his work has been at scrum time. It's GB again. Said what a big run it is for this team. Brooker, Levy, try time. Mitch Healy scored one. Now he's set one up. And from Bristol being under huge amounts of pressure. Man in the sim bin still. They were down to 13 at one point. Now they're just two points down. And still the converter the cup. Oh dear, Ryan. If that goes over, everything is happy. It comes back. Again, it's Mitch Eady busting the line, slipping off tackles, jumping out of tackles, creating the ball to Brooker. Well, you know what Lemmy's going to do. But again, it came initially from Pennell receiving the ball in the 22, giving it to Lamb. He took too much time, didn't find touch. And the result is coming back to the right-hand side. And the result is a five-pointer for the Samoan. It's an eight-point swing so oh. far, isn't it? And with Henson, who's to say, you can slot this right through the middle. Back up to 15, Bristol. goes quiet now it erupts because that ball was never going to go anywhere but in between the uprights and the absolute favor here at Ashton Gate Lemmy scores another cracker and again the missed touch from Lamb the missed tackle again from Worcester that's three I can count and a tremendous support from Chris Booker and that's what wingers do for you. That's what high-quality wingers do for you. We've seen one from Cooper Vuna and we've seen one from Lemmy. And straight away, the coach killer, isn't it? Ball goes up, and what's happened? The jumper's gone up, 
a person's got in front of him, he's obstructed, and you give a chance now back to Worcester. Will they go for three points? Lamb, remember, missed when in front of the posts, but from outside the 22. I think he might pump the corner, he's going to... He said to his forwards, you've got one more, one more go before half-time. Yeah, look, I, I played with Chris Pennell for a good few years. He's the quickest guy in the Warriors squad when fit. I don't think he looks 100%. His acceleration there on the turn to try and catch Lemmy, I don't think was... It certainly wasn't the Chris Pennell of old, and I think he's still carrying that leg a little bit. And, uh, look, it doesn't really matter when they're kicking balls on him. You know, his high ball, his ability to take it is still good, but I do think he looks a yard slower. Yeah, crippled by injuries, isn't he, a couple of times? With that knee, it's Creevy into Ryan Jones. He'll be fresh. Had to go off because of the lack of props, didn't he? Brazilian. Jonathan Thomas. Brazilian again. Lamb. And it's oh! Biggs. He's straight through the hole. And this game just continues to give and give, doesn't it? What a sensational half of rugby, and it finishes with a Worcester score. Made by the blistering, barnstorming run, I've got to say, from Jonathan Thomas. He's been a fantastic buy for Worcester Warriors. He really grit his teeth. He belt down, bit down on the belt and just gained that go forward. Brilliant slip past the bigs. He's come off his wing, didn't break stride for the pass and split the Bristol defence wide open. I'm sorry to say this is a tremendous game. It's the best championship game of the year by a country mile. The year. <laughs> oh, my word. There's plenty of hype. It's delivering. Every point matters. Brian Lamb knows that. He's missed again. He's missed it again. Nine points missed from the boot. As we say, we're to convert that man's we're try. Ca coming to the end of act, weren't you? That is a great try. Training pallet move, but worked superbly in the pressure cooking here, cooker of Ashton Gate. That's what you want. But Lamb has missed a few now, isn't he? Couple of pens conversion. One from five, and it's on the aggregate. One for five, Worcester would be a lot further ahead if he'd have been more accurate. And that's nine points. Miss from there, that's 17.31. No, it's taken me a while to well, do the maths. There's bound to be another one now, isn't there? Here we go. Peel. Dummy, didn't he? Fooled us all. Ten seconds left of this first half. Utterly enthralling contest. Thought it was going to be, but in a very different manner. Peel. Morgan. There's no way through there. Van Belt sees to that. Peel again, Sorensen knocks it off. And there has been a quite scintillating 40 minutes of championship rugby. So quiet words spoken in the Worcester changing room in the last five or ten minutes. They'll be pleased to lead for certain, but with the numbers that we saw, perhaps they should be a little further ahead. Ryan Lamb there in shot, just taking his time, taking stock and thinking about the next 40 minutes, as I'm sure this man here is Andy Robinson with a stern look on his face. But of course, he has been here before and perhaps the years past will serve him well in the next 40 minutes or so. 22-17, the visitors lead, but they are still waving the scarves in the stands here at Ashton Gate. A wonderful atmosphere for what uh, is a game that is already delivered, and we've still got 40 to go. Dowie and Johnny, all yours. Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah. We, like you, I'm sure, just sort of Hello, taking mate. stock and quite believing, sort of pinching Hello, ourselves into that first 40 minutes of rugby. This season has, has followed the script, isn't it? That, 
many people imagined it would. This final, the first 40 minutes of the four 40 minutes that we have, certainly hasn't followed okay. the script that we thought. Five points to the difference to the away team. And may I remind you, the five previous All championship survive. finals, the team that has won the first leg has been the team that's promoted to the Premiership. And we all watch as Gavin Henson puts this ball out and the experience really has to sell in this last 40. Um, what happened at Oxford during the Kazam Stadium when London Welsh last year outfought and outplayed Bristol. In that first game, they got such a lead, and then they went to the Mem, the last game at the Mem, and beat them down there. And uh, Bristol looked a more comfortable side, a more collective side this year, but they've got a heck of a fight on their hands here because, again, Worcester with Lamb's play is just crucifying them. Also, the scrum is crucifying Bristol at the moment. I just caught Matt Sherritt on the way back up to the analysis booth and he said look it's just like our last two games the first time we were nine points down the second game we were 13 points down so we could easily have been 20 points down after that first half but we're not and he doesn't seem too unduly concerned about where they stand at the moment they like or well, they yeah, certainly don't mind coming from behind they certainly finish really strongly don't they Bristol last 20 minutes no, here against Rotherham last 10 minutes in the, in the second semi-final but because he's been pulled back. it has to come into the psyche doesn't it last year's final a 19 point difference they had to make up for the first final leg of the first final to the second leg and the change of kicker of course Andy Simmons ACL injury has put him out of these finals the kicker regular kicker for Worcester this season Chris Pennell heavily strapped left knee he has it's taken over from Ryan Lamb this is right on halfway it's gone high had the leg certainly not the direction but well, what it does obviously now Bristol have to kick from the 22 and takes a minute off the clock <laughs> I know there's a long way to go but you got to remember in those two league games at the beginning of the season the last game Bristol were, you know, they came back in those games and and uh, and did them. So they won't be too concerned. But you've got to say it's just what will be concerning is the ease that Worcester really are just dictating. Won the scrum, the power area. We knew that was going to be crucial, but also um, when the ball's getting through the hands of the midfield. They need those big players, the likes of Henson, the likes of Peel and Ryan Jones to really step up now. Well, they do, because I like, and you've been talking to a lot of Bristol supporters, they like the likes of Mosses in the centre, Toby's obviously on the bench. There's a combination that works. But, you know, you've got to admire the coaches, this is where they go, they make the big decisions, they want the big reward from the players. Now, Henson will oh, boom this, I'm sure, down into the 22. He won't go for broke, I'm absolutely sure of that. Just nudge it there and ask his forwards to start winning some balls, start getting some momentum into the game. Henson goes down into that Worcester half that's just in front of the 22 metre line and you hear the crowd getting behind their team. Smart work isn't it from Worcester and Percival at the line out. They're able to get that first drive on Bristol but now they're Crabbing right hand side, Brooker has it. I'm gonna say these two of the swing kind of records of try scored, point scored, league points, attendance here over 100,000 now. But through the turnstiles here at Ashton Gate, brilliant record that Bristol have here. Peel has to dig it out. Ryan Jones into Rapava Ruskin. But no pace on the ball is exactly what Worcester want. They want to actually get this ball on the floor, hands over it, make Peel having to dig in for it. Now Cortez has to dig in for it. OK, this time they get a penalty and they will go for goal, I'm sure. It's risking, isn't it? A man who's got thighs like most people's torsos. He started, man. started life as a flanker, didn't he? As we see a bit of injury, there he is. He's uh, 
big over the field. <laughs> it's a big scrimmage in Georgian. There's a lot of those in France. Uh, it's a penalty, but they've got Just a head injury, so I'll keep it. 24 focus. years of age. It's been a clash of heads, so the players down. Let's see who it is. He also scored seven tries, I'm led to believe, in all competitions, the first nine games he played. So he likes to get around the paddock as well in his old sort of days as the flanker, but that was from prop. Manufacturing these guys is a bit of blood work going on. Take a breather, clock is stopped, so there's no problem. No need to remind you, but we will do it all again next week. At six ways, half past seven, no, Sky Sports One when the team will be confirmed who will go up to the Premiership. Well, you said at the top, level loathe the way these, these, this sort of two-legged final is, is set up for the neutral, for the rugby watcher out there. It's, it's okay. theatre, it is absolute theatre. And to see a game like this, and hopefully the second half will will go that way because we've seen offences for once ruling defences, haven't we? And that's the way it should be. Defence is important, obviously. Defence wins your champions, wins your games, but it's great to see both fly half throwing the ball out, getting other people to run onto it. Now it's uh, a good balance. But it's heads up rugby. Absolutely. The space is there, and therefore but you've got the likes of Ryan Lama exactly. using that space. And you're picking Matthew Morgan, he's not going to not take that, that space as, <laughs> as Worcester Warriors Nicolino. Percival. Second steal for Worcester at line out time. Bristol and Victor, a couple as well, haven't they? The box kick goes just outside that 22, and now it's Cortez again. Bristol realising Sean Holly came past us up here in the gantry and said, My language is terrible. No doubt the riot act. Red to their team at half time. They're at home. That was their choice. Finished top of the pile, of course. Beat Worcester home and away. And that was better there from Bristol, offering themselves up. Wallace first initially, then Henson initially, not just passing the ball, being physical with the ball. And that's one guy that has been pretty physical, bumping out of tackles. Edie. Risky marshals him well this time, though. Henson and Lamb. I only mentioned Jack Lamb in that first 40, did we? As trainer just getting on the front foot. Morgan, no way through for the Welsh international. It's opening six and a half minutes, 93% possession for Bristol. Oh. Ryan Jones is smacked to the ground by Van Belts and Williams. Edict. Biggs comes in there, it's an important tackle, isn't it? And this is the defence that Worcester have seen, we've seen from Worcester all season. The tightest defence in the regular season, remember. Only 40 tries conceded in the 22 games. Well, not only working hard with the ball in hand, working hard without the ball in hand, that was just set up superbly. Big smash hit there on Ryan Jones, who's trying to control things and, and be more direct, that's Matt. Williams doing that, Mike Williams, sorry, and coming out to Peel, Matthew Morgan, Michini, he can't really do anything other than, than offload that ball, Wallace just holds it, what happens is then, you see the likes of Alex Grove straight in there, Biggs helps, helps keep that ball up, you get the put into the scrum, and we've got another injury. Yeah, interesting, just before half-time I was chatting to the Bristol bench and they said, well, what's happening to Lamb kind of happened to, to, to Nicky Robinson last year, and so far he's missed five kicks at 12 points. I think it tells you two things. One, that last year is still very fresh in the minds of the Bristol bench, but also that right now this game would have a very different complexion had Ryan Lamb taken all his opportunities. I mean, with ball in hand, Ryan Lamb has, has been exceptional. Uh, but from the floor, the change of kicker penalty was, was a shot to nothing, wasn't it, from the halfway line yeah, yeah, for no penal. Comes down to aggregate score in the end, I'm not chastising Lamb. I've always liked it. 
was he 29 a couple of days ago I said you can grow a beard now a proper one he laughed as ever I think Dean Ryan's known him for 12 years it's first time at Gloucester and I, you know all right he's, he's only kicked one out of five but there's another nine points that's just gone a begging and, and how difficult is it if, if Andy Simmons has been kicking your goals all season you haven't mentally had to worry about that aspect of the game and when it comes to the final your main kickers down with an ACL that pressure goes straight back on you yeah unquestionably but I think one thing you could probably level at Lamb is that he is Thanks, fellas. Thank you very much. I'll get him a new battery. Here we are, fellas. It's down the second row, don't slide up. I can't don't believe our remote up. control works from here. It's we fantastic. just muted Pat. I've just shut him That's off. Brilliant. brilliant. We'll do that again. That Have a word with Friday in the studio. Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk to Matt. Uh, Mike Friday. Coach Friday. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's quite interesting, really. I think Bristol have got a, a decision to make. I think Pat's spot on about Penno. He's not 100% fit, but I think they've got to get their kick compete game working. And I think Nicky Robinson at 10 would be a good option. So they need to keep Matt Morgan on the uh, on the path to so maybe move him back to fullback for turnover opportunities. But I think Bristol have got to find a, a way to create pressure on the Worcester back three and get territory okay. in order to, to then make this vulnerable and Worcester defence that doesn't side, like okay. to defend in its own central, half, give away we'll penalties and opportunities for Bristol to exert pressure on them. So interesting tactical decisions for uh, the Bristol coaching team to consider. Of course, Matthew Morgan, that's where he won his, his one and only cap, wasn't it? A full-back table for Liam Williams out in South, South Africa. Was to put in the bind was up. Bristol the bind was up. penalty. Like bind was up, says Wayne Barnes. Goal. They're going for goal here, Bristol. No surprise there. Yeah. And again, it's it's obviously harsh words have been spoken there. It's these guys, yeah. the front five's bread and butter. Yeah. And if there wasn't a response, I'd been very very surprised. It's pretty good from Bristol. The arm wasn't up from Worcester. Henson takes aim once more. Yeah, it was very evident from this side that the problem in that front row, tremendous pressure in that area at the moment, and the Worcester side said just lost his feet and went straight to ground, and that affected the whole front row. But it really is a, a, a big and very important I, I contact. And, and it makes a real clear picture when that happens. When you start levering, oh. it makes it a real difficult picture, OK? You keep it nice and high, keep that arm nice and high. Henson lines up this kick. Every strike, every moment, every point, so, so crucial. Bristol just reeling Worcester in now. Worrying signs now, though. There is it's Ryan Jones' leadership skills. Is it Glynn coming on? It is, Ryan Jones goes off. Welsh captain, British Lion, and he did have a little injury, didn't he, up at Rotherham? And Abby Dale, he picked up something, and obviously he's not comfortable with it. And the main thing to do is get 15 fit guys on the park. What a bad replacement is he, Marco Mama, coming on the field. He's had a great season. Ken Townsend off as well, Ben Glynn on. Watch on, fellas. And a physical specimen. Ben Glynn in that second row, Marco Mama is a great ball carrier as well. Lack the leadership of Ryan Jones. High way, high tackle no, way. No, no. Up the athleticism stake, so. Straight out from the box kick, two points the difference. Half an hour to go in the first leg of this final. Crowd were appealing for a high tackle, but it wasn't, it was a slip. Again, Wayne Barnes isn't falling for that. Just quietened down a little bit, it had to, didn't it, after that first 40, fantastic 40 minutes of final rugby. But uh, there's a few twists and turns to come in this game. Yeah, Creevy knew it, didn't he, on his throat. Hadn't got it quite far enough. Henson, they're beginning to play the territory now, and they Bristol beginning to realise where they need to play this game, beginning to realise they need to take an advantage to that second leg. And they'll get a lift from that last scrum when they got a penalty from it. Now Henson, as we told, just kick into the corners. Don't give any drop balls in the centre. Win your line out, it's a great opportunity now. 
for Bristol to create something, to put some pressure on Creevy. First of all, John Thomas there. There's a dummy going to two, they cut it to five. Put Betty in at scrum half. 95% possession in this second half. Transfer for Bristol. Transfer. And we talk transfer. about Worcester being a danger out wide against Bristol. They don't have the ball. Of course, they, they can't be the danger. It's, it's been Bristol in this second half. They had a reaction to what was said at half time from Sean Holly and Andy Robinson. Certainly a steely look from the director of rugby as they went down the tunnel. Van Belt can't take it. Brazulier can, though, and here's Ryan Mills, and it's just opening up slightly. Wallace will have to come across and field this one. Now he comes opening up this game, and they've dropped off the tackles. Wallace! Ryan Lamb comes across. Biggs is in there. Such strong work from Tom Biggs. Bristol back where this all started from. Morgan, broken field now for the little Welsh Not wizard. Peel. Ben Glynn now. Bristol, Bristol. Ringing out and around here at Ashton Gate. Marco Mummer. Six. Long years of hurt. These fans have had to endure. In touch. In touch is Wayne Barnes. How quick line out is in touch, Orville? Line out for Bristol, but it all started with their fullback. I've got to say, Ryan Mills, I think, for me, did the right side, but as, as occasions happen, that the, the, the press wasn't there, you miss one or two tackles, and then when the, the guys are playing with this intensity, this white hot atmosphere, Wallace again scintillating. Brett, look, two tackles missed then, one bumped off, and then you are literally on the back foot. Again, he does the right thing. Biggs, you think, is going to nick it, then there's one more mighty cleaner. I think it was from Trainer, and look where Bristol are now. Jack Lamb, so impressed in the second half of the semi final here. Here come Bristol with a power play of their own. Ben Glynn with the latest search. That was Marco Mummer. Peel. Morgan. Henson gets that ball back for Peel. Worcester's defence being stretched now. Lifted. Morgan again. Trying to find a way underneath now, but Jonathan Thomas is there. Henson. Brooker running. has to feed. Same again. Cortez. Oh, he's knocked it on. Now Creevy does. Creevy, you could see it in his oh. mind. If he chipped them all left, there was space and it ran through. The Argentines might double knock on for the Pumas. So Briss is still oh, there no, in the right area no, no. with the, what they think is a power scrum, but a bad mistake from one Argentinian and then another. You could see Ryan Mills not from that shot. The inside centre from Worcester was good. Here you go. Oh, my word. To take that ball, red basket, pop it off your left, and we've got a chance out wide. Cooper Vuna was out there. He's out there now on the far side. And he was thinking, mm, I fancy this. The reaction from Ryan Mills said it all. But Bristol are just putting their foot on the pedal, aren't they, in this second half? Look at those action areas in this opening 40 minutes of the second half. When you talk about cause and effect, we see the effect quite evident. Big, big Bristol pressure, but the cause was a kick chase once again. We saw it far, far too easy for Wallace just to get outside the kick chase. He made the break nice and clean, and from then on in, it's just been Bristol pressure all the way. Could something as simple as a kick chase be the cause of all Worcester's problems? It's just far, far too easy. Another big scrum. They're all big scrums, aren't they? Twisting round, put Rose have gone up. 
Worcester penalty. Wayne Barnes saying the Bristol front row have got up. Sorison wanted a word, but I think you just tell again by body language, especially from Marco Mama and Edie, they just got up. And you can see from this side, it's a heck of an angle there from uh, Trainer, not legal. It's back straight, and they just wheel it around, trying to get a reset scrum, trying to get the put in turned around. But pretty good from Worcester, they survive. Now, what's the little imp got on his mind there, Lamp? Matthew Morgan, it's, it's a great battle at 10, isn't it? Both these sides, forwards smashing into each other, trying to get some dominance, territory, enthralling game. Hold on, replacement, 10. Let's get that Yeah, we have the change at fly half. Four line up, fellas. Matthew Morgan, straight swap. Watch on. For Nick Robinson. 22 minutes he was on the field in the semi-final, got man of the match from 22 minutes against Rotherham. Will he have a similar effect tonight? Penal up from fullback, gets the pass away to Vuna. Ryan Lapp, Grow, Van Veltz, Robinson to Amesbury, a turnover ball for the winger. Far tighter the second half. Over. Just opens up for a moment. Trainer. Clear of Robinson again. Floats one over the top for Lemmy. Lemmy against Brazulia. Now Robinson with that left boot. Lamb is there with Pennell. Lamb will take it nice and securely. The spiral. And uh, will surely call for the mark. And does. And just slow things down. Worcester, two point advantage. We reckon, Dowie, didn't we? Being at home, that anything less than a seven point win for Bristol would be advantage to Worcester. Anything more than seven would be advantage to Bristol. Again, it is tight and it's come down to us. It, who knows exactly? It, it, who? I think the side that actually just sets sets itself back now and stops playing and plays the kicking game. I think it's going to be under pressure because I would say the way that Worcester have just come into this game with Lamb in control and then Robinson's come on and he can make a break. He can come around the corner. He'll stand flat. I think it's all about momentum and pace and trying to outpace your opposition. So hopefully we don't go to kick fest and we keep the ball in hand. It's been a thrilling 57 minutes. Second half hasn't really cracked on as that first. Thought he did, but it would take some doing to do that. Hand on Ben Glynn in the air from Worcester. Bristol penalty. This has been plenty of penalties, haven't there, within this game? But hasn't seemed to have fragmented at all. It's been end-to-end -end stuff. Plenty of great rugby and plenty of space out there in a. In a final, you don't think there will be much space out there. And you saw from the reaction of Creevy when he knocked it on from Ryan Mills. Wish they still had that mindset to go and play. You'll get time. Soros will Bristol now yeah. with Robinson on the field. Interesting, they just walked to the line and Soros and barking the orders. They want this correct. They want this spot on. They go to the front through Clint. Now, giving it to Brooker. Biggs had done well, stayed on his man, used all that experienced Tom Biggs, stayed on Brooker, and now Brooker is having a word with Brazilia. My word, the old front peel, you don't see that very often, executed superbly, Creevy just back, well, just run over, why didn't he keep going, Lamb? Again, he's obviously got the call from Brooker, beautifully set move, Glynn's on the field. Oh, he was tackled from behind. That's brilliant from Jonathan Thomas. And again, great scrambling defence from Worcester. Now the pressure's on. Half a metre. Worcester gone for a five-man out once again. And they've gone to their main man, Jonathan Thomas. Yeah, the line-out corner. You stepped off the line. That man there. Bristol stepped off the line. There is 
so much shenanigans going on at Step nine out the line. time. You must stay involved. Two sides that total opposites in terms of approaches. Bristol strengthen their squad hugely this year. The side put together to get them to the Premiership. If you're not going to engage, well, that man stay would in the dearly line. love to be back in the Premiership. Ryan Lamb, he's been there before, hasn't he? With Gloucester, with London Irish, with Northampton, with Leicester. He's played in Premiership finals, in Challenge Cup finals. Now, the Green King IPA Championship final. Now that's a ball! Creevy. Break away, two! Break away, two! Brooker is told to get out of the way by referee Rain Barnes into their own man, Worcester. Then you went back in, then you went back in. I'm calling you, I know you probably can't hear Communication the breakdown break from the scrum after the hooker then, he couldn't get the, well, <laughs> it is difficult, but credit to Barnes, Wayne Barnes, the referee, he did call two, two times the old truck and trailer. Three replacements made by Bristol so far up there. Mark and Mama, that was forced by Ryan Jones's injury. Crouch! And of course, Matthew Morgan off the field now, Nick Bobby. Robinson on. Changing Seven. the second row as well. Ben Townsend off, Ben Clean in that engine room. Just sheer pressure allows those scrums to go down. Van Belt's got off the base of the scum really well, and he had to because Amesbury has had a superb game here at Ashton Gate. Was so quickly over that gain line. Held in. Is that a and now it is Wush's defence that is holding firm, isn't it? Yeah. Stop. They it's get the put in release. to the scrum. Yeah, but it was still a Ruskin is down on one knee. And a good movement off the base of the scrum there, and Amesbury does so well, powers his way in there. Lamb just scrags him by the bottom, but this, again, it's the big South African. Ex-Northampton Saints just gets on him, gets underneath him, keeps him out, and gets the advantage at the scrum. Brilliant play. We have a word now with Steve Lansdowne, the visionary behind Bristol sport as a whole. Steve, thank you very much for joining us. What do you make of this opening 61 minutes of this first leg of the final? It's, it's, it's a cracking game, isn't it? I mean, the, uh, I mean, I'd like to be two points ahead rather than two points behind, uh, and hopefully we can get uh, ahead by the end of the game. But uh, two good sides playing some great rugby, and I mean, you, the atmosphere in here is absolutely tremendous. Just what was the plan? Was it obviously to win this leg? Was there was there talk of? points advantage did you have that conversation with Andy Robinson no I think uh, what we like to do is be in the lead when we go to Worcester but uh, we want to be in contention and we're certainly that at the moment and uh, we always knew it was going to be tough over the two legs and it was only going to be a few points in between at the end of the uh, the second leg and uh, I think uh, so far so good uh, as far as uh, keeping you know in contention with in this game but obviously we'd like to be ahead Steve you mentioned it already absolutely incredible atmosphere here at Ashton Gate tonight just how proud are you of the spectacle that is here, this championship final here tonight. Well, this, to be honest, this is if you, you talk about vision, this is what it's all about. It's a, a cracking game of rugby in, on, a, on a great pitch and a great stadium with a fantastic crowd behind it. You know, both fans giving it all, both sets of uh, players giving it all. That's what you want. This is what sport is all about. Really appreciate your time. I hope you have some nails left by the end of the game. <laughs> I hope so too. Thanks very much. Vuna. Brazilia. Lamb again, penal into that line, and now it's Biggs. Biggs with a chip ahead. Who's going to win the race? The ball bounces cruelly, as it so often does. Amesbury, Charlie Amesbury. We keep mentioning the wingers there. Going forwards and backwards, he has been superb tonight. And again, he's there as the saviour of Bristol. Well, you've got to have someone mopping up at the back, sweeping up. Again, Worcester will not give up there. Great little movement from right to left. Pixel smiles. 
panel, unfortunately, couldn't do it. It's that funny shaped ball. There you go, panel straight away. It gives him a chance, and that's all you want. Great movement there. Panel can't get the overrun it. Watch this skill there from Wallace. And again, you mentioned it, Amesbury. That's what you want. You want your back three working in unison, whether attack or whether defence. And Amesbury's mopped, mopped up a lot of rubbish at the back tonight. Now, Leonardo Senatore comes on wearing 19 for James Percival. Good shift from James Percival, isn't it? Senatorial slotted to the back row. Mike Williams will go into the second row alongside Jonathan Thomas. Wait, wait, gaps. Watch out. Knew it was going to be tight. Four points separated them in round one here at Aston Gate. Four points separated them in round 22 at six ways. Two points so far. Cooper Vuna just completes his tenth carry of the night. Creaving. It's superb. Williams off Lamb. Brilliant battle within the back. And here's Jonathan Thomas now. Round the corner really effectively. And then they reload Worcester. Senatore, his first run is met by Carl Trainer. They've absorbed some pressure now, haven't they, Worcester? Now want to exert some themselves. Penal. Mopped up. Alex Grove couldn't take the pass. Julia again. White Williams, a young man. Bright future for him. He's a hard on compromising player. Bristol have turned it over. Now the penalty, the full penalty to Bristol. Every time the whistle blows, players are on their knees. They've given everything. We've still got 16 minutes left. Yeah, there's, there's a marked change in what Bristol are doing at the moment defensively. In the first half, they were over-competing, as it were, at the breakdown. Now they're not. They're sending one person in to slow the ball down. Everybody else is fanning out. It's closed all the gaps in the wider channels. And when they do target the rook, they're super effective. And that's really been the big change in the second half. down from us on the ground you're here Sean Holly and Andy Robinson good line out from Bristol isn't it Peel Marco Mamuna first receiver Worcester now not committing too many to the ruck Williams drives Ben Glynn back he is lapped I don't think Bristol want to be too cute with a double receiver, basically. You just ask your big forwards to smash it up. Robinson, Henson, it's Gareth Moore. Just for a moment, there was a little bit of space out there. Ryan Bauer with a tackle. Bristol are beginning to get these penalties in this second half now. And this one is kickable, very kickable. Nicky Robertson, pretty good, he will go, will he go? <laughs> Robertson into the corner, Henson for goal. It's Henson for goal, I think it's the absolute correct decision. Take the points on offer, good forward driving again. Bristol actually conceded 15 panels to 10, so Worcester just uh, creeping back up that table. Trying to slow it up, wasn't to be. And this, as you can see, Nicky Robertson now just whispering the ball out. Yeah, Darren, they're a very different side with Robertson at 10, aren't they? Look. Morgan, undoubtedly a brilliant talent, but they're far less structured. Robinson's come on, he's really tightened the game up. They're playing much more structured. At the moment, they're in total control of this game, both in terms of territory and possession. Remember the 24 points they scored in 12 minutes. Our first semi-final against Rotherham. Not a sound here. 
and Ashton Gate. Too quiet, it would seem. Crowd doing that. Was a, a voice as Kevin Henson went to kick. Wasn't mine, I listened to him. Yeah, I just think he just misstruck it. I don't think Gavin would be uh, too put up by some idiot booing like that, but um, not the best of manners. But again, back to the game, an enthralling contest, just two points. We said we know it's going to be easy. <laughs> Here we go. They pat it back, and it's Cortez. Tackle on them. Tackle on them. When the ball was stuck, and it's straight back to Bristol. Huge hit still coming in. There's no love lost at all between these two teams. Another man down for Bristol. Such has been the physical top. Great hands from Marco Mama. Peel, Robinson, Edie. So influential in that first half, Mitch Edie. It's Henson's down, he's been down some time, he looks in real agony out there. Jack Lamb. 12 carries for the open side. Robinson, he's got through. Advantage. Advantage to Worcester. Out of the way, out of the way, They could go from here. Lamb is screaming for it, but they've slowed the ball stop. down well, Bristol. They have to kick. Oh, and this is the injury to Henson. Didn't look very good. Yeah, Gavin Henson has been down for some time. Fellas, it'll be your oh, you never want to see a player going down at this stage. Of course, we saw yeah, Ryan do, do Jones, all. didn't we? Last year. No, 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 no. Did the first leg of the no, final with that exactly. broken ankle. Oh, for six months of the game now. A big talismanic figure like Gavin Henson. Their goal kicker as well is down. And it looks really nasty. Guys in the truck who have seen the injury, we're not playing it out, it's one of those. But he also plays that second second receiver role, doesn't he, Henson? Playing so much at 10. So we hope it's not as bad as it looks, but every care will be taken. I mean, if, if we do fast forward to, to next week, Ben Mosses, Huge creative player was brilliant at six ways in the final round of the of the regular season. Was there six ways? Uh, he's, a, he's a Bristol favourite, isn't he? I just think he's just uh, again a bit more of a live wire. Andy Robertson makes these calls. Sean Cully does. They want the experience. They want the boot of Henson. But I think creativity, if, that's, if that is a word, which it is, you know exactly what I mean. He offers more mosses. This is the first score. Beady coming on, and that's a great angle, great line from Mitch Edie's tremendous response. Henson again standing in that first receiver, and then it was the power game. Ebbed and flowed. Where we go in? Well, Wayne Barnes is under the posts. Brasilia chase, chases and pats his forwards on the back on the, the backside. Beautiful finish, beautiful finish from Cooper Vuna, inside and outside. And again, it's that man Edie, just there. And Lemmy, as we all know, that's what he does in his sleep. But what a half. <laughs> Not to be outdone, the lion himself. Biggs goes again, training, training, uh, panic move, and uh, that was a tremendous first 40. Yeah, wasn't it? Only the two penalties so far in this second half. We're just on the 70 minute mark. Can I have 80 though? Can I have 80? Your musings, Pat, as Jack Tully will obviously. Take his place in the centres. Ten minutes to go this first leg. Two points, the advantage for Worcester. Well, well you're always looking, aren't you, for perhaps what will be the difference ultimately, because it's so tight, this affair. But I think right now what we're seeing on the pitch with, with Henson down is a huge, huge blow to Bristol. And I know what you say about Mosses being a great attacking talent, but this guy's their goal kicker, he's their long-range touch finder, and today he's had one of the best games I've seen him have in a long, long time. And uh, I think this is a huge blow to Bristol. 
totally agree. Tonight, he's, he's wanted the ball, isn't he? He's slotted in that first receiver. He's been really lively and active within playing that role. He's yeah, to touch really yeah. well. They realise, don't they? Sean Holly, of course. And I think more than that, though, it, 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 Henson's kind of been the mainstay of the midfield for some time now, in many respects. And they're going to have to do a real restructuring that midfield, and, and that will really affect them defensively as well. This is a huge, huge injury for Bristol, and I think Andy Robinson will be scratching his head now, be really concerned about this because. Yeah, you know, again, big, big restructuring. Does he move Robinson into the centre? Does he, you know, to, with Matthew Morgan at ten? Does he bring Mosses in? I, I don't know. It's, this is not an easy decision for him. Everything's kind of built around Henson in many respects. It is, but he just moved Mosses to, in, in, into twelve. And that's the, that's the easy answer and the the correct answer if it looks like Henson won't play next week. But Andy Robinson had talked about strengthening this squad, about having the big players, but having players underneath that could slot in seamlessly to the plan we will see it's being tested now isn't it we saw when ryan jones went off but last year just what an influence that had on bristol it, never want to see players of go henson's quality go off in this kind of manner we wish him all the very very best no doubt it'll take some hours to assess his injury, Sean Perry in the crowd there, former Bristol scrum half captain, Gavin Henson up. A tremendous standing ovation for Henson here, talking to Andy Roberts as we did in training what, a couple of three weeks ago. He couldn't speak highly enough of the guy's attention to detail, he was the last off the paddock. You're right, Pat, he will be a loss, but maybe another opportunity for, for a younger lad, but uh, it's, <laughs> it's a hard life out there. And again, another part of this first leg was going to be about the amount of casualties. You know, the, the Worcester had their casualties coming into this game. Of course, James Hall with his foot injury for Bristol. And Ian Evans as well. We saw him on crutches at half-time with Bill. Well, I can tell you there won't be much contact done in training this week, running up to next Wednesday. It'll be, Jones has gone off. It'll be, Henson has gone off. It'll be armchair. But as Dean Ryan said, they had what they had haul out McMillan out with a pectoral and Ian Evans, whereas Dean Ryan could pick on was their five backs, Simmons, Stelling, which would probably be them. Look, it happens. It's it's part and parcel of the of rugby, part and parcel of the professional game. And Huge so it's scrum from so Bristol. Scrum. He did. Good tackle in there from throw. Offside. Worcester. Perinisi. Bristol galvanised by the injury. Robinson is shaping for the drop goal. He's gone crossfield. Vuna, where's this going? Into the arms of David Lenny. Uh, and he thinks he scored. Uh, we're checking, try yes or no, please. It's good. Yeah, it'll be offside, isn't it? Wayne yeah, Barnes, the calmest man. At Ashton Gett. Try yes or no. We saw a crossfield kick from Lamb for Biggs, didn't we, in the first half? This is Peel trying to find the gauge. Is he thinking that Robinson's going for a drop goal? A penalty is coming. Gee, Does he kick advantage gee, away with that? Well, it doesn't matter. Like he may have got five points. Boone is on, as long as he hasn't touched Vuna. And Vuna, I don't think he's off the floor. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Wallace is up. He can jump up. I don't think he's impeded Cooper Vuna. That's gone backwards from Cooper Vuna. That's Lemmy the poacher. This is the angle. Isn't it's it? this whether one. the TMO deems contacts happen there and he puts it off. Actually, I think the ball has already gone through his arms before Wallace has made contact. There is nothing wrong with the finish. Or did Wallace's hand touch anything? That's the only thing that could have happened. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. At the very least, it's a Bristol penalty. It's whether it, no, it doesn't touch field. Wallace's hand at all. That's gone backwards. Sorry to go on about this, Cooper Vuna. The try is 
perfectly scored as long as there's been an infringement of contact. Barnsley, yeah. You may award the try. There you go. Award the try. Wayne Barnes awards the try. David Lemmy looks to the heavens. And Aston Gate rises one to applaud one of their favourite sons, David Lemmy. His 45th try for the club. His second today. And again, it's Edie off the back. Just absorbs one. It's another slip tackle. He's going, he's angling in at Ryan Jones. Nick Robinson pinpoints his kick. They probably would have come back. He wouldn't have been kicked out and the advantage gone. He would have come back for three. He's made it five. Can he now make it seven? Fortune favours the rope. <laughs> oh. Robinson from the touch line. He can't get it. Arch poachers, you say, Dowie. And Bristol take the lead for the first time since the 17th minute. Yeah, one of the things we haven't really talked about is the impact that the benches are making. I think quite clearly the Bristol bench is a stronger bench, and this is 160 minutes. It's going to come down to every man. And I think if there is one advantage or one difference between these two teams is the impact created from the benchmen. And it's only now that we see Worcester ringing the changes on the bench. I don't think they've got the same level of confidence uh, on their bench as perhaps Bristol have with theirs. Kessel is on as well for Bristol. That's... Bristol's bench what? unloaded now. There is Tom Kessel with the box kick. There's a skip of the step of David Lemmy. Kessel signed to Bristol from the Cornish Pirates. And then, of course, off to Northampton next season. Rizulia. Now he goes high. Smash to the ground, Wallace. Those tackles still raining in from both teams. Three points the difference, remember. Only four points separated them in the regular season games. Robinson. And if it were to finish like this, what a knife edge this game would be on. Tubby. Worcester fans appealing for it being high. Bristol fans appealing for holding on. Go wide again. Luna. It's forward, said the crowd, and in the end, the officials agree. This could be Bristol's chance now. It's nothing to do with the hands, it's all to do with the ball. Scrums change, basically asking, it's all to do with the hands. Ryan Mills basically asking. The, the rule has changed, it's not the direction of the hands anymore, it's the movement of the ball. Wayne Barnes, you've got to say, was right in line, and that lovely loop pass was deemed forward. Just under six minutes to go, three points ahead. I think Bristol need more points to take to six ways next Wednesday. Yeah, Cooper Vuna goes off. Ben Howard is on the far side, trudging off. It's penal, having some... Pat was talking about it, was he? MOT. He didn't think he was fit starting the game. Well, if he wasn't fit, he's done a heck of a job. So is he. <laughs> what a signing. And we suspected, okay, didn't we, as we just hearing on the air smart, razor sharp stats, guys. Ten carries. Ninety-one meters for the winger. This game, this final is going to come down to the tiniest detail Crouch. next week. Three points, the difference here at Aston Gate in the first leg as we go into the final five minutes. As we near the end of Act Two, will something happen? Well, the Bristol forwards think so, and I think they will ask Robinson, this is a big call now, do you go for the three? Do you guarantee it Well, Nicky Robinson had a pretty good strike? He missed the last conversion. But I think they may go for three. Take the points on offer. That would be five points going to six ways. 
five points ahead. Nicky Robertson, I think I'm right in saying it's six out of six. That last league game down at six ways, so he's experienced. Plenty of kicking down there. Performance when the pressure comes on. He saw when he was at Gloucester side for Wasp. It was Carl Hogg who was talking to us about it yesterday. And the pressure off. He plays really well. Does Nick Robinson? He's off to iron up next season. Pressure off. A little bit of pressure anyway. This to make it six point difference. Is it coming around quick enough? It is. Perfectly judged kick from Mr. Robinson. Nick or Nick, he doesn't matter. He slotted it in. He brought it in. That's five. Oh, goodness me. I can't do me maths now. How many points is that? Six. Got it all wrong as usual. Six points taken in. I think maybe if you'd have asked the travelling Worcester fans, what do you reckon? We were saying, weren't we? Take six that. points. Anything under six points would, would be Come good. On the ball. Good. And there's still some time left, Alec. With the penalty here for Bristol. Well, they'll get straight Tackle back down the then. other end, don't they? They were the ones who chose to have the first leg here at home. Ben Clean is smashed. And they don't want to mess around That's too much, rough. Bristol. You can see Kessel just trying to control things. Where are we going with this? I'd be putting this up right up into the heavens. Stop, stop! Kessel, brilliant servant. Count the man out. Lamb, Ben Howard, there's space. Inside for panel. That's the Bristol 22. What a big factor in this game has been the kick game, has been the chase of the kick game from both these sides. Well, again, Worcester don't really have to force it now. Just take, keep hold of the ball and almost entice Bristol to give a penalty get a away. Penalty. Yeah. Brazulia. That's Joe Rees rumbling forward. And it's the Irishman, the Ulster. Lamb. Grove comes back on an angle. Howard. Crowd calling. For four passes, nothing from the officials. Penalty, Bristol. Bristol's bench jump in the air. They know how significant that moment is. I think it was forward. Doesn't matter. Not releasing. Creates the time, creates the space. Nicky Robinson now won't go for broke. He just needs to nudge this on the 10 meter line. Put everything into it, get it into row Z, make sure a supporter touches that ball. So Worcester can't take it. Dowie, plenty of choices. Who's your man of the match? Oh, mate, I think Charlie Ainsbury in, in his rushing defence has been absolutely fantastic and also sweeping up the back. Jack Lamb came into the second half, but my Green King, IPA man of the match, Mitch, Mitch Eady, Bristol boy. His performance, especially in that first half, scoring a try, setting a try at Falemi. He's my, like I said, Green King. IPA man of the match. Competition for the ball, 23rd appearance of the CD. Scored a try to Nini. Second leg of the final last year. Worcester with one. Last roll of the dice. Where's this going? Into the hands of Howard. Ben Howard. Now defense. Sanatorius. Out on this wide right-hand side, it's been there for ages. Again, they go down that short side, they've got numbers as well. Ryan Mills, no basketball tackle. style, still going on here. 30 seconds left, the first leg of the final. Worcester again pressing, looking for something more for this final than to be six points down. Grove, they dare to dream of a try, Reese, Bristol, holding firm at the moment, Williams, Lamb is there to meet him, presentation is there though, Thank you. 
Sorensen with a tackle. Annette. Annette is tripped. He's, He's got over the line, is he? He has. Worcester have scored right to the death of this first leg of the final. They simply refused to give up. 28 27. The ex Ulsterman has just broken probably Bristol's hearts here. Yeah. Brazilier is almost the first break the scrum half's made from the base. He just made an extra meter. That guy's just come on. He's just seen it and he is powered over. Heartbreak for Bristol. Heroics. Heroics from Annette and Worcester. Ryan Lamb kicks the conversion as well. He pumps the air. Look at the reaction from the Worcester bench. They have won the first leg of this final away from home. 29 28. Well, Bristol are still in this game, obviously, big star, not like last year when they got put away in Oxford by London Welsh. They will regroup, they will lick their wounds, and they will have to come back. But again, it will be one heck of a fight at Six Ways next Wednesday.